ایمان ہے اور آری ہیں خدمت کا ایک تسلسل ہے اللہ رب العالمین ان کی خدمات بھی قبول فرمائے تشریف لاتے ہیں حضرت علامہ محین الدین اختر صاحب نارے تکبیر نارے رسالت یا رسول اللہ الحمد لله وحده الصلاة والسلام على ملا نبي بعد أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الأمين الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين ببركة إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم وصل عليه صلاة وسلاما عليك يا سيدي يا سيدي يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا سيدي يا رحمة للعالمين Respected علماء اکرام علماء النواز غزابی صاحب قاری زیار صاحب Respected elders, brothers, sisters, beloved children السلام علیکم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته All praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, cherisher, sustainer of all the worlds. Choices, blessings and salutations be upon the last of prophets, the noblest of prophets, of a master Sayyiduna Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was sent to this world as a mercy unto all of the worlds, as a rahmatun lil alameen. <coughs> Firstly, I would like to thank the committee of this beautiful masjid, mashallah, Atif Bhai, his brother, and all of those who have worked tirelessly behind the scenes to organize this program. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them all a long and healthy life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep this masjid steadfast until the day of judgment. Ameen. Allahumma. Amen. <clears throat> Rather than giving a speech, inshallah, this will be more like a talk. I see many youngsters here as well. Inshallah. A few things which I will touch upon. And within my time, inshallah, I will take your leave. We are gathered here today. To celebrate and commemorate the Yadmi of Sayyiduna Dhafil Adam Rahimahullah Ta'ala Alayhi. And the question arises for me and you is that this great saint of Allah, this great Qutb of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, even after 1000 years, why do we still remember him? So many years have passed. What is it that he done specifically? What is it that the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do specifically which is why we and you gather and remember them? And this is also a lesson for me and you. You know, if we pick up from their life the things they've done, me and you can also become friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, the doors of prophethood have been closed, but the doors of being a saint of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are still open. So inshallah, I will just go into a few details regarding the way that the awliya Allah have lived their life. And inshallah, sun karamat of Allah al-Adam rahimahullah ta'ala alayhi. Inshallah, I hope this is my first time coming to this beautiful masjid. This very, I did not expect it to be so beautiful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep it beautified until the day of judgment. Ameen. Allahumma ameen. One thing me and you need to remember is to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Firstly, we must learn what is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to do. 
And how can we get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves? I'll give you an example. Your mom or your dad at home, for example. You see someone who gives so much love towards your father. You see someone coming to your father and treat them with respect. Automatically, you will have love for that person. Automatically, you will love that person because of the respect they show towards your parents. What is it that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loves more than anything in this world? Is his ummah. Is his ummah, me and you. It is the du'as he made for me and you which is why we are here today. And to gain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we must gain closeness to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah ta'ala says in the Qur'an, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَخْفِلْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُرُ الرَّحِيمُ That Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are saying to the people that if they want closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is Qur'an ayah, if you want closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What will happen if you follow him? يَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will automatically love you and what will happen once he loves you? وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ He will forgive you for your sins and he will forgive you for your shortcomings وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah is the most forgiving and the most merciful The first lesson to go on that path of the sabbath Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells me and you, if you want that path as well, you want to follow the path of the saints of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, get, get close to who? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And do you know what it is that Sayyidina Abu Fulah Adam rahimahullah ta'ala alayhi, do you know what he done to gain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do you know this yarmi? Anyone, do you know why it's Yarmushli? Why they're not 12, 13? It is because on the 11th of every single month, what does Sayyidina Ghafal Adam rahimahullah ta'ala do? He would gather the people just like you are here, you are here today. He would talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And after that, after the Yarmi program, he would feed tens and thousands of people. He would practically serve the deen. You know, practically serving the deen, he would go out and cook the food. He would help cook the food and he would help serve the food to those who are in need. That is how he got closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. And what is it that me and you can do? You know, in the UK we live here. How can we gain that level as well? Is by feeding the poor people in the UK. You know, believe it or not, there are people in the UK who are still eligible for zakat. They take zakat while they are that poor. And you youngsters and those who have something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us to gain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, me and you should go out and feed those and help those poor people to gain that straight path that Ghulf al Adam rahimahullah ta'ala alayhi wa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, I had the opportunity of reciting the verse, Ya iha ladina amanu taqullah wa kunu ma'aswam. O oh, you who believe, fear Allah. Fear Allah. Be God conscious all the time. Remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always watching you. Wa kunu And be with those people who are from the truthful people. Be with those people who are pious. Do you know why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, be with those who are truthful? If you are with those who are truthful, you will become truthful as well. You will abstain from lying. My Ustad, Mufti Akbar Hazari sahab, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him a long and healthy life. The advice he would always give to us as students, he would say, keep the friends and the company which will benefit you in this world and in the akhirah. Don't make friends who will destroy you in this world and in the hereafter, they'll be no good for you. Do you know why? Good friends will bring you to the masjid to read salah. Good friends after they, you die, and they read their salah, they will raise their hands and do dua. Bad friends, they won't even take you to the masjid. They'll take you on the wrong path. 
And when you die, they don't even read salah themselves, they do dua for themselves, what dua are they going to do for you? You know, your friends, your boys, and you chill with them every single day, go out with them, you chill. Believe me, none of them will benefit to you when you die, only the people, these people in the front here. The people who are sat around us, our elders who are sat here, these are the ones who will pray for me. Make friends with good people. And inshallah, once we make friends with good people, we will be able to go on the path of Sayyidina Ghafur Adam Rahmanullah Ta'ala. What is it that Ghafur Adam Rahimullah Ta'ala alayhi, how is he so God conscious? Do you know what he would do? He would act upon every single sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Data Ali had very Rahimullah Ta'ala You know, Data Sahib in Lahore, the youngsters, you all went to Pakistan, you go to the Lord, you know, my dad will say, your friends will go to Data Sahib. So he said, Who is Data Sahib? But we still go, we pay our respect, we do dua that. He wrote a book called Kasful Mahdu. And in that book, he says, If you want to find a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you want to find a true friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, find someone who is on the sunnah of the Prophet So much so, he said, even if you see someone flying on a carpet, if you see physically someone flying on a carpet, and he is not on the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, know that he is getting help from either magic or the shaitan. You know, we have many people out there that say we can do this, we can do that. But yet they won't be able to name you ten sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The friends of Allah would never ever miss any sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do you know what the sunnahs are? We drink water in how many sips? Three, Three times. I can drink it in one. There's no sin. The Allah Ta'ala said if you, you do this anyway, if you drink it in one, you get a sin. But we do it three, why? Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had done it. Our tasbih, namaz, subhana rabbi al-a'la, subhana rabbi al-a'la. First we did it just once. We do it once, job's done. But why do we do it three times? Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had done it three times. We leave the masjid with our left foot, why? If I went with my right, there's no sin. No sin at all. If I entered with my left, no sin at all. But I enter with my right, why? Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had done it. All you know, these little aspects in life that you learned. Enter with the right, do this with the left, do this with the right. Why we do it? It's because we want to be on the path of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And remember this, especially the youngsters. Every single time you act upon a sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, without you knowing or not knowing, you are attaining closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, if we love them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love me and you again. فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly states for me and you, follow the path of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. اِتَّقُ اللَّهُ There's two definitions that Sayyidina Abbaqul Adam rahimahullah ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. One was fearing Allah. What is fearing Allah is one following the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and also knowing our qabaib and sars, our major and minor sins. If me and you know the punishment for each minor and major sins, believe me, believe me, we will think twice before we do that sin. You know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, towards the end of time, towards the end of time people will sin like they take away you know when a fly sits on your face and you just do that it flies away this is how people will sin in my own mind that's how common sinning will become we won't even realize it and me and you are sinning this is why it is for the aim upon every single muslim to know all of the minor and major sins and their punishments why because once we know that punishment i know the punishment for leaving one for the mouth I know the punishment for backbiting. I know the punishment of lying, swearing. I will think twice before I do that. And once Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives me and you the ability to learn them, inshallah, we will become better Muslims in this world. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us closeness, not only to the awliya Allah, but the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. We lie, we cheat. 
Do you know what the hadith said about lying all the time? You know, this is, these are all advices for getting on the path of the salaf. You know, the salaf is that thing that every friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala went through. And you know what is the biggest disease that me and you have in this day and age? Is lying. Do you know what happens when you lie? The hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that every single time you lie, a black dot is created on your heart. What's created on your heart? A black dot. I'll give you an example. We have many children here, and many of you as a parent will know this, that when your child lies for the first time, you know, when they've done the first time, they've done something so bad at home, they'll come up to you and they will hesitate to tell you because they know it's a lie. They will hesitate to bring it out that I done this, but they will try to lie so they don't get in trouble. They will panic. They will go so through much just to tell that one lie. The ulama say that is the first black dot that is created on that. So much pressure they have on them is that first black dot. After that, when they lie, it becomes normal for them. So much so that we lie and we lie that our hearts become fully black. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives me and you the cure for that as well. He says, Alladina amanu wa tatma inna kulubuhum li dhikrillah, ala li dhikrillahi tatma inna kulub. Do the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know your dhikr method. You sit there and do Allah, we need all of these names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you know what that dhikr does? It purifies our hearts. It makes them soft again. It makes us emotional again. It makes us realize the Sunnah and the Quran and it makes us realize what is right and what is wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Messenger Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam tells us many, many of times, do not lie and do not cheat. Why? Because this is the foundation of all of these things. One lie will lead to another. One guna will lead to another. And this brings me back to Sayyidina Abbas al-Adam rahimahullah ta'ala alayhi. You know, when he was young, you must have heard this story many times. But there is so much for me and you to learn from. Regarding lying. Young age, young boy. He's troubling. He's going to go far, far away to study the deen of Allah. And look at the conversation between mother and son. Mother knows I'm not going to see this child for I don't know how many years. I don't know even if I'm going to see him again. She could have said anything to him. The mother of Sayyidina Ghafir Adam Rahimahullah Ta'ala alayhi, could have said anything. But she only gave him one advice. She goes, Muttar, do not lie. That's it. Didn't say anything else. Didn't say do this, do that. She said, son, do not lie. Why? Because the mother knows. Mother knows that the, all evilness starts from just one lie. And the famous story goes, Sayyidina Abbas Azam Rahimahullah Ta'ala Alayhi gets on a caravan, you know, they used to travel in caravans, you know, groups of people. On the way they get hijacked. Some of the robbers, they come aboard. They start going around all the adults, taking their belongings, taking their money. Few times they passed Sayyidina Abbas Azam Rahimahullah Ta'ala Alayhi. Didn't notice, didn't think about it. Towards the end, they asked him, do you have anything as well? He said, yes, I have 14 dinar. They go and then he checked his pockets, nothing there. Go, but I do have them. So they became a bit angry. They take Sayyidina Abbasid al-Adam rahimahullah ta'ala alayhi to the leader of all the robbers. And they go, this boy is saying he has 14 dinar on him. This boy keeps saying he has 14 dinar on him. The leader calls him over, he says, son, are you feeling okay? We're robbing people. You're inviting us to rob you. What is this? And he shows under his armpit he had a pocket that his mother sold for him. He lives there and he goes, here's my 40 dinar. This is my 40 dinar. And you know that robber and all his associates, they started crying. They started weeping. They go, look at this child. The one advice his mother gave him to not lie, he had acted upon it. Here's me and you robbing people every single day. No sukoon in our lives. 
What does the leader do? He takes the hands of Sayyidina Dawfur Adam rahimahullah ta'ala alayhi and he takes his astaghfirullah. He does tawbah on the hands of Sayyidina Dawfur Adam rahimahullah ta'ala alayhi and they become his first murids. At the age of five-ish, imagine this. If this was his state in a young age, imagine once he studied what he became. Once he went into Chilla, what he became. Once he sat with the ulama and the kutubs of that time, what did he become? Only then we realize the status of Sayyidina Abu Adam rahmahullah ta'ala And you may have heard the story of his mother and father. But I just want to make a point here. Alama Sahib talked about the... Uh, from Hazrat Sulaiman alayhi salam, his minister, Asif bin Barqiya. The story goes... That he was asked first, Sulaiman first asked his congregation of jinns and humans, I need the throne of Bilqis in front of me. Ifritum min al jinn, a massive mighty jinn stood up. Tafsir say his one foot would be, you would be able to see the, you wouldn't even be able to see the end of his foot. That's how big this one jinn foot was. And he said, I'll bring it to you. Before we finish this program, before this gathering, I will bring it to you. He said, no, I need it faster. Asif bin Barqiya stood up. And he said, Ya, O Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Sulaiman alayhi salam, I will bring it to you before you even blink. Next thing you know, he blinked and there was the takht and the throne of Bilqis. Do you know the takrif of the earth? تکریف تب نہیں آتی جب علماء بنی اسرائیل کے کوئی ولی اللہ اس طرح کر لے تو آگ نہیں اٹھاتے کہتے ہیں کہ ٹھیک ہے وہ کر سکتے ہیں مگر جب نبی پاک صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی امت کا کوئی ولی کرے تو پھر انہیں تکریف ہو جاتی ہے علماء کے بارے میں جب پروفیس صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سے دیز آر دی انہیریٹرز آف دی علماء دی پروفیس آف بنی اسرائیل اف داس دی سٹیٹس آف دی علماء آف دی سمہ دن وٹ آب دی سٹیٹس آف دی اولیاء اللہ then what about the status of the grandeur, the biggest awliya Allah to come share Sayyidina Abu Adam rahmatullahi wa ta'ala. Going to the story of the mother and father, so beautiful. You know, I've heard, you know, every time I hear this story, it brings my iman. You know, even when I read it, I go to other lectures, I watch it on YouTube, I feel so happy that, look at this story. The father's name was Sayyidina Abu Saleh Jangi Dost. The story goes that he was in his spiritual state. He was out. He, had, he hadn't eaten food for many, many days. He was in a chilla. He became a bit hungry. So on the way, where two rivers meet, he seen an apple. He picks up the apple and he eats it. And you know the ayah, ya ladina amanu taqullah. He became God conscious. He started fearing Allah. That this apple must be someone's. And I didn't take their permission and I ate it. You know, uh, I'll give you an example. You know what I mean? Like walking around, we see a park, we see berries on it, we start eating them. You don't feel bad. You think, oh, it's out in the wild. We should eat it. This is our mentality. But this is the mentality of the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He thought, you know what? No, this is someone's apple. And I'm going to have to find out whose apple this is. So he starts to follow the river upstream. As he travels, he travels, he travels. He finally sees a garden full of apple trees. And he sees a tree which is leaning into the river. So he estimated that, you know what? This is where that apple came from. So he goes and finds the owner. Sayyidina Abdullah Samir, rahimahullah ta'ala alayhi. He was the owner of the garden. And he said, oh man, they don't know each other, first time they're meeting. Says, I ate an apple and I did not pay for it. I didn't know whose it was. And I need to repay you back. I need to pay you back for that one apple. Now, he was a wali of Allah. The father of Sayyidina Adam is also a wali of Allah. He knew, you know what, this man, he's come all the way this way to repay me for one apple. Must be something about it. So he said, you know what? You have to work on my gardens for one year. How many years? One year. One year. And then after that, I'll see. Without even asking one question, 
without even asking one question why, when, how, he said that's fine. A year passes, he goes up to the man and he says, my year's over, he said no, need you for another year. This carried on happening up to seven years, up to several years. Sayyiduna Ghazi Azam rahimahullah ta'ala alayhi's father carried on working in the service of this man. After the seventh year passes, he goes back and asks for permission, I want to finish. He said, okay, I will let you finish, but there is one more condition I have for you. That is, one more condition I have for you. What's that condition? I have a daughter. I have a daughter who is deaf, who is blind, who is dumb, she can't speak. And she is crippled as well. This is for all you youngsters. Imagine someone said to you, yeah? She's blind, deaf, can't talk, she's crippled, you have to marry her. You'll turn around and you're a madman. <laughs> Literally, you will say, yo, I need to look after myself or am I going to look after her? Or is she meant to look up? This is, our, this is the state of our minds though. But I'm trying to compare our minds to the minds of the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, no problem. Has it? I will marry that girl. If that's what it is, to repay for my one upper, I will marry that girl. I will marry your daughter, no problem. They get married. He goes into the room. Sayyidina Abu Saleh, Jangi Dos, Rahimallah Ta'ala Alayhi. He sees a beautiful woman. He looks at her and he sees there's nothing wrong with her. But this is, look at the inta of Allah he had, the fear of Allah. He ran out of the room. He ran out of the room and he bumped into his father-in-law and he says to the father-in-law, I think you have married me to the wrong woman. It's not the same woman. You said she's like this, but that's not her. I can't sleep in that room. This is not right for me. And the father-in-law smiled. And he then said to Sayyidina Abu Saleh, Jangi Dos, Rahmanullah Ta'ala He said, you know why I said she's deaf? She's deaf because she has never heard the voice of a dead man. Do you know why I said she can't talk? Because she has never talked against the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you know why I said she can't see? Because she has never ever laid eyes on a dead man. And do you know why I said she was crippled? Because she has never ever walked out of the house without being in the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was the... This was the state of the mother and father. You can only then imagine what would be the state of the child that both of them, pious people, had. And that was the child they had. Sheikh Sayyidina Abu Azam, Rahmanullah Ta'ala Alayhi. Sheikh Junaid Baghdadi, Rahmanullah Ta'ala Alayhi says, In my time, there will be four Qutubs. In my time, there will be four Qutubs. And the biggest and the best of Qutub will be Sayyidina Abu Azam Rahimahullah Ta'ala Alayhi. He said, in a state of spirituality, Junaid Baghdadi Rahimahullah Ta'ala Alayhi says that there will be a wali who will come in my time, whose foot will rest on the necks of all of the awliya. And he will also say this, and when Sayyidina Abu Azam Rahimahullah Ta'ala Alayhi came, he was the one that stated that my foot will be upon all of the necks of the awliya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I could go on for much longer, but inshallah, I do not want to take much time. I want our guest as well, uh, Sayyid uh, Khalid Asnan Shah Sahib, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him a long and healthy life as well. We are all here to hear him as well. But these lessons in our lives, you know, the points I've made today are for me and you to reflect on. If we follow the ways of the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we change our mentality according to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, especially youngsters. Just going to say one, one more thing that I will take me. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, regarding parents, so important. A man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or jihad me shri kone di gadat mangi us ne. The Nabi Baad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ne farmaya, hey bandhe kya tum hare walidain zinda hai. نے جہاد کی اجازت مانگی اور نبی پاس صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے نہ ہا کی یا نہ کی سوال پر سوال پوچھا کہ کیا تمہارے والے دن زندہ ہیں سکا نام زندہ ہیں 
تو نبی پاس صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے فرمایا فجا ہفی ماں جا ان کی خدمت اور ادب کر یہی تیرے لیے جہاں گو ابے یو پیرنٹس گو لو یو پیرنٹس اللہ سبحانہ تعالی ویل ریوارڈ یو وتھ دی سیم ریوارڈ یو وڈ ہیو گٹ فار گوئی فار جہاں دس از مائی میسج اسپیشلی ٹو یو لوکس گائز یو اونلی ہیو ون مام یو اونلی ہیو ون ڈاڈ ریمبر دیٹ اینڈ وین دے گو یو ویل ریگریٹ فار دی ریسٹ اف یور لائف یو ویل کرائی فار دی ریسٹ اف یور لائف آئی وش آئی ہیڈ لسن ٹو دیم آئی وش آئی ون وات دے ہیڈ سیڈ This is why this is a message especially for the youngsters. Love and cherish your parents. Ask those who do not know mom and dad today how they feel. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all our parents who are alive a long and healthy life. And those of our parents who have passed away, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them a high maqam in Jannah. Du'a hai Allah ta'ala sab se kare mujhe. Fir aap sab to'a amal karne ki tawfiq ta'a farmaye. Ameen. Mama tawfiqi illa billah.